Hey wrestling fans, this is Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, WWE Hall of Famer, and you're watching Ambi. Don't miss it. Hey everyone, it's Alicia and I am beyond excited to be sitting here with the legendary Ricky the Dragon Steamboat today. Hello. Hey. How hey. are you? I'm good. Good. Just I don't know if they know we're just wrapping up on a big show tonight. Yes, we're yeah. here at Greek Town in Toronto. So Greek. how are you feeling about everything? Yeah, I thought the show was really good. You know, you uh if you see a lot of independent uh, programs going on out there and, and wrestling shows, the, the, tonight was really, really a good put together. I mean, uh, I like the promotion. I like the guys. They all work hard and uh, and they're very conscious of it. Yeah. So, you know, it was it was good, enlightening to see. One thing that I loved yeah. hearing you say is that was a main event, and it really was. We had Channing Decker going against John Atlas. Yeah. yeah. It was amazing. That was a main event. Yeah. That shit was a main event. They kept it off nice. Is that the, well, you know, when people are walking away, but they're talking, you know, you've got their, you know, their attention. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad to see that, you know, especially for this company. That what's, is what makes a really good event to you is when there's something buzzworthy in that. Oh, walk for away sure. Like, hey. You know, I mean, could you imagine what it feels like and they're walking away and there's dead silence? Right. Not, not so hot. Not no, so good. No. So it was a good, good show tonight. And uh, the end product was... Uh, Definitely a main event for, you know, they came to me and asked me, he said, Ricky, could you give me any advice? And I said, the only thing I'm, that I'm going to tell you guys, and, uh, you know, you're, you're probably the two best that the company has to offer. You know, one being the champ and the other one being, you know, going for it. I said, the best thing I could tell you, uh, make it a championship match, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, they certainly did. They certainly made it a championship match. Well, something that I have to bring up is the fact that I, of course, introduced you as legendary, yeah. but I found it really interesting when I came across an article where you kind of said that you don't necessarily uh, see yourself as a wrestling legend. It's more so just a super nice compliment. So I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about that. Is there a reason well, why yeah, you it, it, It's definitely a compliment, mm -hmm. you know. Um, may, maybe, you know, when I think of legends, I think of guys that, you know, and here I'm going to throw a number out there, and I just realized that that includes me. You know, I think the guys that did it 40 years ago or so, you know, okay. but this November 6th will be my um, 43rd year. <laughs> so uh, I guess I'm talking about the guys that wrestled back in the 60s, you know. Um, uh, wrestling the business, of course, was a lot different. Um, it, was, it was not nearly as commercialized as it is today which uh, has taken the business to another whole level. But when I think of those legends, and uh, when I started in the business in 75, um, you know, they were on the twilight of their career. But I actually got to work with some, and I actually got to see them work. And, um, you know, just to watch those guys out there perform and the things that they would do, um, it, to me, it was legendary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of good athletes today and a lot of good wrestlers, but um, to me, uh, I, I feel that they really do uh, a whole lot of movement in the ring, and it's just to be doing movement in the ring, you know? There's the purpose behind some of the moves once in a while. Well, you know, I, I tried to, when I, I, do, I do do seminars and I do teach, and I said, do you guys know how to tell a story? Because in every match, there's a story, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of them um, don't even have uh, how to get the first base about starting to tell the story. But they'll go out there and they'll do a hundred things and they'll do them well. But does any of it tie in to tell the story? You know, does, does it, I use the phrase connect the dots, okay. you know, and um, they just go out there and put together stuff and well, this move leading to the next move leading to the next move and so forth in your match, does it all connect together? Not really, they just, they, they do something to the head and neck and then they'll do something to the leg and then they'll do something to the arm and then, you know, they're all over the place. That's they're not connecting the dots. Not connecting the dots. <laughs> so the, the answer to this, you know, is, I tell the guys, I said, pick one body part and your story throughout your whole match is that you focus on the one body part. Like, if you pick the leg and I'll pick the arm. So throughout this whole match, it's tit for tat on those two body parts. And the fans pick up on it when they watch, if they see me working on your arm, and next thing you know, you've got my leg, and then five minutes later, I go back to your arm, 
they get it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because just a few minutes earlier, they saw me working on it. Yeah, of course. Okay? So they go, wow, I understand why he went back to the arm because he was just working on it a few minutes ago, right? But these guys will work on the arm and the other guy will work on the leg and he won't, won't go back to the arm, he'll go back to the head, he'll pick the head and neck. Sounds so like a pet peeve of yours. Well, there's, yeah, it is. There's, <laughs> there's, there's no connecting, mm -hmm. you know, there's no connecting. I love that you bring that up because when I interviewed a fellow full-time baby face, Tito Santana, he was talking about how people don't really get ring psychology a lot of the time now. Yeah, so well, that's, that's, what, that's, that's what I mean by, it's, it's part of ring psychology, yeah. you know. And I said, when you guys put together a mash, all the stuff that you need to know is if you pick the arm, that all the stuff you put together, that at the end of each of those moments, you're back on the arm. Mm -hmm. Now, you may do four or five different things, moves, holds, or be crafty, but at the end of it, make sure you're back on the arm. And then you, <laughs> if you pick the leg, make sure that everything that you do, that you end up with that. So that the fans watching, that's the biggest thing. Um, you get a big, big disconnect from the fans, you know? I mean, uh, you get reaction, and it's only because of the spot. But if you get them involved to where they understand what kind of story you're trying to tell, they'll get more involved with it, mm -hmm. you know? So, but it's, it's, um, it's sort of a lost art. But, uh, you know, like tonight, I was watching the main event. Uh, they had uh, picked up body parts that I saw, and they were doing other things to other body parts, but it allowed them to get back to the original one. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and uh, that's okay. And they did a lot of high risk stuff too tonight. There was a lot of it. And, 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 and I swear, it was making me squirm because, <laughs> you know, some of the stuff that they were doing hurt. Yeah. I mean, legitimately Oh, they're hurt. not just falling onto like fluffy things. They're falling onto concrete uh, yeah, and the, into the, tables the, and chairs. The, yeah, the floor and, mm -hmm. and, and, and from six, eight feet up, you know, it, mm -hmm. it hurt. They put their bodies on the line tonight and they made it a main event. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I did mention the word baby face there and you're one of the few wrestlers that have actually stayed baby face through their career. Right. Uh, so I was curious for you though, had you ever really wanted that heel turn at some point? I tried in 91. You know, I've been in the business about, um, 16 years, and I've been a baby face throughout that whole time, and I wanted to work as a heel just to be able to say I did it. And uh, I went to the promotion, they, they thought it was a stupid idea, and I kept coming back that, look, I've been in the ring with the best heels in the business, from the Jake Roberts and the Ric Flairs and the Randy Savages and the Don Morocco's and the list of guys that I've been in, I said, I know how to work like a heel because I've been in the ring with them. Yeah. And they just said, it, it would probably hurt my career and um, it, really, it really wouldn't get over. It'd be a sour note, mm -hmm. you know, no matter how hard they tried to uh, shove it down their throat that I'm a bad guy, that I'm a heel. It just would not work. So, but you know, at that time, I was upset about the fact that I don't have that opportunity in my career to work as a heel. But now looking back at it, I've, I, felt, I feel good that they turned me down only because that I'm one of the few guys that as you start in your business, either a heel or a face, and wrestle uh, actively for 20 years. You stayed and, the course. And end up the same way <laughs> as you start. Yeah. You know, there's just a few of us, Tito being one. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So there's just a few of us that started that way, ended that way. Well, you iconically yeah. are known for a breathing fire, but apparently you learned that from somebody in the circus. Yes. So how long did it take you to get the, get the feel for it? Was it pretty simple? Well, yeah, um, it really wasn't that hard because uh, we, we, it was kerosene that he introduced me to, and he put just a little bit in shot glasses, so I would, and then after a couple of blowing your you know, your kerosene to the torch, uh, the shot glass grew and grew and grew, and you know, it, it really, uh, it really wasn't that hard. He said, the only thing you got to remember is that when you do it outside, uh, watch your torch and make sure that the flames are going away from you mm. instead of. That would not have been good. No. And <laughs> the very first time that he was showing me, the guy's name was Brian LaPalm in this parking lot at a circus. And, um, the wind was blowing and he put his torch up 
and the flames were going away. And just as he was getting ready to blow, the wind shifted and he blew this kerosene all over and his face was on fire. And he's running around the parking lot and he's got his face on fire. Did that freak you? You're like, and, I don't want to do this. And, and the office sent, <laughs> office sent down a guy to be with me and I looked at him and I said, you call the office and you tell them that we've got a 15 year veteran running around the parking lot with his face on fire and Steamboat ain't doing it. <laughs> so uh, what was the turning point where you're like, I'm gonna well, do it? Well, he, he, you know, he had, it's just superficial, almost like a bad sunburn. Sounds like I didn't weird. know it because I'm looking at this guy's face. You know, yeah. And he had no eyebrows, no eyelashes, and about two inches back on his hair uh, line was gone from, you know, and he just, no, 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 it, it just happens. Don't worry about it, you know, so. You know, so that's what we started doing little bits at a time. Yeah. Make your way up until yeah. you got it, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, after doing it, it was good for TV and, and pay-per-views, you know, because of the ball of fire and, and the way it looked on TV. Yeah. But then I had the residue of kerosene in my mouth and then uh, get in the ring and work. <laughs> it was terrible. Your you know, face says I, it all. It's like you can, it was, you can taste it right now thinking oh, about it. Oh, was, it. it was a terrible taste. And oh. I was really happy that that segment of blowing, when it came to an end, that I was happy. Just, uh, God, I'm so glad. I, just, I, I thought it was just going to last maybe a couple of months, but it ended up being a couple of years. Lucky you. No, oh, God. I had, to get a blood, <laughs> I had to get a blood test every three months. Really? Yeah. Kerosene's not clean fuel. It's dirty. It's no joke. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, some of the names that you had mentioned there are Randy Savage, Jake the Snake, Don Morocco, mm -hmm. and those are some of the more well-known and iconic matches that, and feuds right. that you were a part of. Yeah. Uh, but outside of the more talked about matches, who is someone you've been in the ring with that you absolutely adore facing? Uh, I had some good matches with, um, you know, and this is back uh, in the mid-Atlantic mid days with Crockett Promotions. Uh, a guy named Greg Valentine, whose yeah. father wrestled. Uh, another guy named Blackjack Mulligan. Um, Barry Windham, uh, his son wrestled. Um, I had some great tag matches with Jay Youngblood as my tag team partner. And we wrestled against the uh, Briscoe brothers, Jack and Jerry Briscoe, and uh, another team, uh, Sergeant Slaughter, and his partner, Don Cronoodle, and uh, did big business. Uh, with those teams. I would have to say that uh, that run of about four and a half to five years as a tag team was probably the most funnest time in my career. Okay. Yeah, in a tag. Because before that and after that, I went back to just doing singles. But being in, a, an, in with a good tag partner and having a good tag opponents um, was a lot of fun. And was it just the fact that you're with somebody who was more, was it like their personality? Were they a bit more goofy to be around? Or what, what was the My reason My partner, for Jay? That? No, no, he was, he was just a good guy. And he okay, sure, just sure made he it kind of easy. He, yeah, he, he liked to have fun, but you know, he was just, um, he was a hell of a worker. And, uh, you know, everybody talks about Ricky Steamboat and how he was a salesman in the match and, uh, and selling in the ring. But I learned a lot of it just watching Youngblood. You know, and uh, he was, you know, the guy weighed 190 pounds soaking wet, but God, he could sell his butt off. And, and, and when he wanted to make a comeback, uh, he had so much fire and uh, he was just a pleasure to, to have as a partner. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't so much everything was relied on Ricky Steamboat all the time. You know, it didn't matter. The match could shift and everything's on Youngblood. And um, yeah. Feel very confident that, that we'd have a five star match at the end of the day That's with, awesome. him, with him, you know. Well, you're obviously a very recognizable person, so Thank and you so. must have a lot of people coming up to you, whether it's at a show like tonight or even at random. So, I was wondering, where is one of the stranger spots that you've had a fan encounter or met a fan? Um, sitting in the men's room and the John and really? uh, um, a pencil and a piece of paper come underneath for an autograph. No. Did they really? Oh, yes, and more than once. <laughs> more wow. than once. They can't just wait the five seconds I'm not until Well, it either, could you do it now? I got to catch a plane or, wow. you know? Yeah, hmm. that was it, embarrassing. And, and do you take the paper? No, I, no, I don't. Like, I just, I said, you know, give me my moment, mm -hmm. you know. Um, <laughs> um, you know, most in uh, restaurants are kind of hard. 
because you want to sit down and have a meal and if you're sitting there you know with sitting there with my wife and you have people watching or if they know you and they're waiting for that first person to break the ice about coming up for an autograph and if I sign it everyone else. here they come of course but if I and I tried to turn away nicely I said look I'm let me finish my dinner and I'll be happy to sign it and if they didn't even hear the verbiage, the other people, patrons, but they see the guy turn away and walk, and I didn't sign it, then they get it. You know, they, I said, I guess Ricky's not signing, but all I said was, let me finish my meal, and I'll be happy to sign it. But in most cases than not, the person's like, well, we just finished and we're walking out the door. Could you sign it now? Mm -hmm. And I said, you don't understand. <laughs> you know. And I, I still wouldn't. Sometimes they'd be a little pissed off or mad, but... They, they have to understand, if I just do the one, here they come, and then... <laughs> so the whole flock of well, them. Yeah, and then sometimes I see cooks looking out the door, and, you know, and they're waiting, really? they're waiting, they're wow. waiting. Yeah, so... I understand it's part of the, part of the deal, yeah. right? It's part of the deal. But I don't hesitate in airports or, you know, walking around in stores or taking pictures. I even carry 8 by 10s in my vehicle, so if somebody recognized me when I'm at a gas station, I sign something for them. But there are some moments to which you have to draw the line and hope that they understand. It's all about circumstance, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, just to wrap things up, I do want to leave it with all of the fans who are going to be viewing. Is there anything you want to say to everybody? You know, I've always been um, uh, very thankful to all my fans. Um, I get about 150 to 200 pieces a month of uh, fan mail, and I answer every single one. Wow. Every single one I answer. So. Uh, and most of it is like giving back or just saying a great big thank you. So, uh, you know, I get a lot of weird requests. I'm not going to mention <laughs> some of the I'm weirdos. Sure. But, and a lot of stuff sent to me in the mail for me to sign. But, um, you know, this November 6th will be my 43rd year. And uh, thank you for all the years. And, um, and I live in Florida. I got a nice home. And, and you know, I got you know, my vehicles and I got, I got a hobby car, you know, that I'm an old car nut that I work on and stuff. So and I wouldn't have any of that if it wasn't for the fans that came out to watch. You know, so it's my big thank you to you. And, and anywhere I go, I, I feel like I'm, I'm trying in such a small way of giving back. And that is I'll take a picture and sign autographs for you and, and uh, shake your hand and, and say thanks. As long as it's not underneath the bathroom stall. That's right. right? Or at least let me finish my dinner. Just let him finish his dinner. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you get a nice dinner and you end up signing, the next thing you know, it's cold. Oh, right? no one wants that. Well, <laughs> okay. Well, as a fan, I want to say thank you so much for joining me today. It was an absolute pleasure. Well, thank, thanks for having me tonight. Of course. Okay. And remember, to everybody viewing, you can visit us at alicia2.com for all exclusive interviews and features. See ya.